Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down episode 3 of HBO's The Last of Us. Warning of spoilers and let's jump right into it. So episode 3 slows down the pace as an incredibly well thought out slow burn of a romantic story, elaborating on Bill and Frank from the game, but if they actually got to live happily ever after. Although this episode has its pros and cons, I think the former heavily outweighs the latter, as it's wonderfully written, brilliantly acted, and well paced. Although the episode may feel like a bottle episode, it's the best version of a bottle episode you could imagine. I haven't felt so strongly towards an apocalyptic, character-driven, self-contained episode since like The Walking Dead's Season 6 Episode 4 episode, Here's Not Here. The Last of Us Episode 3 made me feel a type of way that The Walking Dead hasn't in a long time, just saying. For viewers of The Last of Us that haven't played the game, Episode 3 is essentially a self-contained story about the lives of two characters finding each other in the apocalypse and living in isolation until old age where they can happily die together contently. The entire episode doesn't really move the plot forward other than explaining how Joel and Ellie got a truck with a fresh battery, but the backstory and journey along the way immerses you in this love story, it's just so brilliantly executed so I don't mind it at all. For fans of the game, however, Bill is an incredibly important character for us, so being able to see his backstory and his entire life in the apocalypse had me glued to the screen the entire time, especially since how important it is in the game for Joel to finally get that truck. So real quick, I'm going to recap Bill and Frank's story from the game while explaining how the show elaborated and expanded upon it while remixing and altering it in a positive way, with the creators having hindsight in mind from the games, and don't worry I won't be talking about future events, only about the events of episode 3. So in the game, Joel wanted to meet up with Bill to get a vehicle, as Bill owed Joel a favor from the past. You traverse Bill's town filled with traps until you get caught in a snare trap and have to shoot upside down to save your life. Ellie finally cuts you free, then we get the introduction of Bill as he saves your life deus ex machina style. Bill's a total hard ass, causing Ellie and him to have some fun back and forth banter. Bill knows of a fresh car battery in the other half of town that he hasn't cleared yet, so you go off to get it, but once you reach it, you realize that someone's already taken it. This is where Frank comes in. Turns out, Frank was living with Bill as his partner, but Frank was so miserable with Bill that he ran off to get the battery himself, but got infected in the process. Frank was already dead in the game once you met up with Bill, with you uncovering Frank's body and death note after the fact, realizing that he was the one who took the battery that Bill had scoped out. His optional death note elaborated on how miserable he was with Bill, causing him to run off. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the note is optional to pick up, so if you give it to Bill, he expresses the implication of not only being mad that Frank ran off, but that he stole his battery, died in the process, and wrote Bill one final F.U. letter after the fact. The thing about Bill's character in the game is that although he's homosexual, it's not his main character trait. It's a very subtle nod that develops his character without it becoming his only defining characteristic. Due to this, it made it feel so natural and organic, opposed to it just being some woke inclusion checkbox. So with the show, even though episode 3 focused heavily on Bill and Frank's relationship, it still doesn't feel like a representation checkbox, as I think the show did it in a brilliant way where it was able to focus on it while still feeling real realistically well written. See, the thing is, Bill and Frank got a tragically sad ending in the game, so with the power of hindsight, it feels like Neil Druckmann was able to retcon their story for the show in such a way where it feels like the show is in a different multiverse where Bill and Frank were actually able to live happily ever after. Now, as I said, Bill being gay in the game was kind of a side detail, it wasn't really the main focus, but because of that, fans of the game really took a liking to that side story and the mystery behind Frank and the true implication of it, which is why it became so popularized, causing the show to focus on it as a main story. Now, I've heard people online disappointed that Bill dies at the end, stating how since he dies, his character development doesn't push the main story forward due to him obviously never being in the show again. To that, I I say it doesn't really matter if he died or not, since in the game, after Joel and Ellie get their truck running and drive away, they leave Bill still alive, yeah, but you never see him again for the rest of both shows, like that's it, you straight up never see him again. So him dying or not is irrelevant since even if he lived, we probably still would have never seen him again on the show anyways. At least this way, he's given a proper story that's able to shine in the spotlight along with a touching conclusion that properly ends his story. 
So more on the specifics of the episode as far as the development of Bill and Frank's relationship, I have one minor gripe followed by multiple compliments. First off, their first kiss does kind of feel kind of forced and contrived in an unrealistically convenient way to push the story forward. However, I'm a sucker for piano scenes as I play myself, so I love how they bonded over playing it. Also, I've literally grown strawberries my whole life, so seeing them enjoy homegrown strawberries hit close to home for me, as it was yet again a really great scene for them to bond over. Moving on, I love how we get to see Bill's origin story of how he survived the apocalypse due to being a doomsday prepper, which perfectly explains why he's such a paranoid, closed-off hard-ass. I think it's brilliant how the show transitions into the flashback by initially making you think that it's going to tell the story of how the government ends up killing the people that they took from the town, but then it transitions into telling the story of the one man that stayed behind, Bill. Since Joel and Ellie were talking about the corpses of the civilians from the town, it felt like we were going to get just a predictable story about how they were killed, but that's subverted by instead showing us Bill's story instead, which was brilliant in my opinion. Also, as far as Joel and Ellie goes, I wish that we got more of them this episode, but what we did get was great. At the beginning, when Ellie told Joel not to get mad at her over Tess's death, I thought that we were going to get the you don't talk about Tess ever conversation from the game, which we didn't, at least not at first. Since we didn't get that convo near the beginning of the episode, like it kind of seemed like we were, I hoped that the early on convo was planting seeds for it later on, which is exactly what happened. By the end of the episode, we get some game accurate one to one dialogue as Joel tells Ellie that they aren't going to talk about Tess, that they're going to move on while keeping their past to themselves, and for Ellie to not tell anyone about her immunity along with always following what Joel says. So I just love how we got original setup for this end of episode video game conversation, since at the beginning of the episode they kind of hinted at it, making it feel like it came full circle. Ellie originally thought that Joel was mad at her over Tess, when in reality it has nothing to do with Ellie. Joel's just mad about Tess in general, but the way that he unhealthily deals with grief involves compartmentalizing in such a way where he just never wants to talk about or acknowledge it, instead just bottling it up, ignoring it, and moving on. In a way, Joel is doing the same thing with Tess's death that he did with his daughters, unable to process the deaths of his loved ones, causing him to never be able to heal from them and move on healthily. Oh yeah, and also it was fun seeing a flashback to Tess still alive too, I almost forgot to mention that, but yeah, that was pretty dang cool. I do also like how we got an explanation to the 80s song that we heard at the end of episode 1, as the song playing on the radio after Joel, Ellie, and Tess had left the quarantine zone implied that Bill and Frank were already dead. And then finally, although there's many awesome moments from the game that the show didn't do in episode 3, those will always still be in the game. And since the show did such a good job adapting Bill's character onto TV, I don't even mind that it's missing all of those iconic game moments. Also, having Bill and Frank be dead by the time that Joel arrived was such a great subversion of expectation, especially for video game fans as we were obviously expecting Joel, Ellie, and Bill to all meet up with even more weight than just TV show only viewers. The thing is, with many adaptations that are actually done well, the creator of the source material is usually always heavily involved, so they're able to remix and retcon the original stories by updating them and fixing maybe mistakes that the creator may have felt like they wished that they could have done differently or changed for the original source material, with the TV show adaptation now giving them a chance to do so. To bring up The Walking Dead again, just look at the first six seasons of the show, then compare it to the original 100 issues. Although a lot is the same, and the show does take a lot of inspiration from the comics, a lot has changed, but for the most part, it's 100% for the better. Since Robert Kirkman was heavily involved in the first handful of seasons during The Walking Dead's early days, he was able to closely take a look at his original story and improve it in ways that he always wished he could have with the power of hindsight. Likewise, I feel like Neil Druckmann in The Last of Us crew is doing the same thing with the HBO show, where they're able to respect the game and include aspects of it that everyone loves, but although they're staying loyal to the source material, they're also improving it and remixing it in order to properly adapt the game as a TV show with 10 years of 2020 hindsight from the game in mind. Overall, this episode has no right being such a slow burn banger. From beginning to end, I was properly immersed and invested at what I was watching on screen, as I love apocalyptic dramas, especially when they're able to nail a great character dynamic in the form of a full bottle episode character study. Many shows try to do this, but they just completely miss the mark, as it's difficult to get it right in such a naturally satisfying way. However, 
However, The Last of Us Episode 3 does it perfectly and left me pleasantly surprised. In my opinion, Episode 3 earned my respect in regard to feeling like I'm able to trust the show and the creators who made it, since if this level of detail and high standard continues throughout the rest of the season, we're in for a huge treat. So I'm going to give this episode a solid 9 out of 10. I liked episode 3 more than episode 2, but I still think I liked episode 1 slightly more than episode 3, just simply due to how well they did the Sarah prologue in episode 1. That being said, episode 3 is practically just as high quality as episode 1, with them being neck and neck while episode 2 kind of trails behind quite a bit. But what do you think of episode 3? Let me know what you thought down below in the comments and give the video a like if you enjoyed it to help boost the interactions on the video to help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. Sorry this review came out a few days later than expected, I've just been so busy with Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad content lately, but I'm still extremely excited for The Last of Us Season 1 every week and I can't wait to see where the story goes. Subscribe to the channel for more Last of Us coverage. I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.